Good evening. In this video, we're going to learn about spherical mirrors. Now, spherical mirrors aren't the flat mirrors like you might have in your bathroom. Spherical mirrors are mirrors that are curved, um, and they create different kind of images depending on how the mirror is curved and where the object actually is. So there's a little bit more complications to spherical mirrors than there are to plain mirrors like we're accustomed to using um, like in the bathroom. Um, let's first of all remember the law of reflection that we learned last time. When you have an, ang uh, an incident ray at an angle relative to a mirror, the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection. Remember that we always measure these things from normal to the surface. And so our picture last time looks something like this. And it's important to remember that those two angles are equal to each other. We could also draw a picture like this where the surface is curved. The same rule would still apply. The incident angle equals the angle of reflection. And so this picture on the right is basically a cross-section of a spherical mirror, like we're going to learn about today. There's two kinds of spherical mirrors we're going to learn about. Uh, the first being a concave mirror. The picture might look something like that. We kind of turn it to the side and take a cross-section, it would look more like this where our object is over here on the left. And so that would be a concave mirror. A convex mirror will look more like that, where the surfaces curve the opposite direction relative to the object. And so looking at that picture versus looking at this picture, you can kind of see a difference in the image that shows up on the mirror. So let's first of all look at concave mirrors a little bit. So again, here's a picture of a concave mirror, kind of looking at it from a cross section. The basic idea that we're going to look at first is what happens when parallel rays of light strike the mirror. So there's parallel rays of light going towards our mirror. What happens is that they reflect towards one point on the left side of the mirror, kind of sort of like that. That point's referred to as the focus, or sometimes it's also called the focal point. The distance from that point to the mirror is referred to as the focal length, and that's a characteristic of the mirror. It depends on how curvy the mirror is. We'll see a little bit more of that here in just a second. And so, first big idea is that parallel rays of light, which strike the mirror, will be reflected through the focus. And again, that's the focal length right there. The second big idea, kind of redraw my mirror, is that the mirror is part of a circle. Therefore, it has a center, which we're going to label with a capital C. So there's the center of curvature. So if you were to like draw this mirror using a compass, C is where you would put the pointy end of the compass as you draw it. The idea is that the circle center, just like any other circle center, any line that goes through it has to be perpendicular to the mirror. So because they hit the mirror perpendicularly, they're a radius basically, um, they're going to reflect with no change in angle. Basically the incident angle is zero. So again, any line that passes through the center of a circle and then reaches the circle itself is a radius and therefore it is perpendicular to the circle. And so the incident angle is equal to zero and so the reflection angle is equal to zero. So if a ray of light passes through the center it's going to reflect through the center. Next big idea is the idea that the focal length, F, is one half the radius of curvature. And so typically for a circular mirror, we'll denote that with the same symbol as a center, we'll say that it is C. So F is one half the radius of our mirror. So we can draw a picture that we refer to as a ray diagram, where we use these facts to trace rays that allow us to figure out what an image is going to look like. So here's our mirror. There's the center and the focus. I'm going to draw a line through the center and the focus like that, and I'm going to call it the principal axis. It's going to kind of be like our baseline for um, how we look at the mirror. 
whatever I'm looking at in the mirror, like it could be your nose, for example, um, regardless of what it is, we're going to represent it as an upward arrow that we draw at the location of the object relative to the center and the focal point. And so let's just suppose that we were looking at something that is about halfway between the center and the focus. We're just going to draw like an arrow like that. What we're going to do is we're going to start at the top of the object and we're going to draw at least two of the following rays. We're going to draw a ray that starts out parallel to the principal axis, kind of like that, because we know that it's going to reflect through the focus, kind of like that. The second ray we can draw is basically the opposite of that. It's a ray that goes through the focus. It's going to reflect parallel to the principal axis, kind of like that. So any ray that goes like this, so there and then through the focus, the reverse is true as well. So all we did was we took that one ray and we just turned it around. The third way, ray that we can draw is the ray that goes through the center. So in this particular case, in order to draw that ray, you would take a ruler and line it up with the center, draw it going towards the mirror, and then it would reflect so that it went straight back through the center. It's kind of hard to draw this on an iPad when you don't have a ruler to guide you. Um, so what should happen is that those three rays should all intersect at about the same point. So mine's just a little bit off just because it's kind of hard to do this um, on an iPad when you can't measure it with a ruler. So that's what kind of we're looking for. We're looking for at least two rays so we can figure out where they're going to cross at. So where do we find the image and what are, what are its properties? Um, the top of the image is at the point where the two reflected rays that you drew cross. The bottom of the image is on the principal axis. So we don't have to draw rays to locate the bottom because it's on the axis. It's just going to be on the axis wherever we um, locate the image at. So I'm going to kind of redraw my picture real quick. I only need two rays, so I'm just going to use those two rays. The point where they cross, which is right here, represents the top of the image. And so I draw an arrow going from the principal axis to where the rays cross, and that's what my image looks like. So notice a couple things about the image. Notice, first of all, that the rays cross below the principal axis so the arrow representing my image is upside down. That means that you actually see an upside down image. Uh, the fancy science term for that would be inverted. Uh, the second thing to note is that the actual rays of light cross. We're going to call this a real image. What that means, the actual rays of light cross, is that if you put a screen at that location, or a piece of paper or anything like that, then you can actually see the image on the screen at that spot. Third thing to note is that the arrow for the image is larger than the arrow for the object. That means that you're going to see a bigger image relative to the object. So it's going to be magnified, in other words. So let's look at convex mirrors now. So there's a convex mirror. We're going to start off with the same idea. What happens to parallel rays of light? So here's a bunch of parallel rays of light. They're going to be reflected away up and to the right again, excuse me, up to the left, um, but they're not going to cross a single point. Instead, the opposite's going to be true. They're going to act like they came from a single point. And we're still going to call that single point the focus. And so our picture will look something like this. They're going to be deflected or reflected away, and so you could trace them back to that single point that we're going to call the focus. Um, same thing as before, the focal length is still one-half the um, radius of curvature. So I can say f equals one-half c. So we can still draw a ray diagram for a convex mirror. We're going to use the same rays as before. 
We just have to realize that our focus and our center are on the other side of the mirror this time. So there's my focus and there's my center. There's our object. Keep the object on the left. Um, and as you're drawing this, draw your object bigger than you did before. And I say that because I know what's about to happen. And it'll help make your picture a little bit more clear. So the first ray that we drew was a ray that was parallel. And then it went through the focus. Well, we're going to draw it parallel, but this time instead of going back to the focus, it's going to go out from the focus. So draw it to the mirror, and then line your ruler up with the focus, and then draw it going up and away like it came from the focus. The second ray is the ray that went through the center and then reflected straight back with no change in angle. So line your ruler up with the top of the object and the center, kind of like that. Draw the way ray go into the mirror, and then it goes straight back. In this picture, notice that the rays don't actually cross. The rays are like diverging from each other. They're never going to cross because they're getting farther and farther apart. But when you trace them backwards, they do cross. So the rays cross back here. And that's where we're going to see the image. I kind of redraw my picture over here real quick. The reason that you see the image is because your eyeball, which is over here, that's a real bad eyeball, um, the rays of light that are reflecting from the mirror into your eyeball, your eyeball thinks that light travels in a straight line. So your eye doesn't see the fact that the objects, the rays of light reflected off the mirror, it just traces them back like this. And then the point where they cross is where the image is at. Because we don't actually have physical rays of light crossing, we're going to refer to that as a virtual image. The only way you're going to see that image is if you're actually looking into the mirror, if your eyeball is over to the left. You won't be able to see it if you put a screen back there. The image that you see when you look in your bathroom mirror is a virtual image as well. It would make no sense if you put a piece of paper behind your bathroom mirror and could see yourself on it. You can only see yourself in the mirror when you look at it from the front. Um, also, because the arrow is pointing up, this image is upright or right side up. Upright would be the fancy way to say that. Okay, next thing to look at. How can we actually relate these distances to each other? How can we relate the distance from the image to the mirror and the object to the mirror in order to figure out how far apart these two things are. And so I'm going to kind of redraw the picture that we had to begin with, um, only without the rays, so that we can kind of see what the distances look like. I'm going to call this distance f, which is the focal length, so between the focus and the mirror. I'm going to call this distance s subscript 0, or o rather, for object distance, o for object. And I'm going to call this distance s subscript i for image distance. And again, make sure that when you measure these, you measure them from the mirror. And then lastly, remember that the focus is one-half the radius of curvature, which is that distance right there. And so we can relate these distances with this relationship right here. So the 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. So a couple quick sign conventions. Most of the time these numbers are going to be positive, but here are some exceptions. The focus is negative if you have a convex mirror. In other words, it's on the wrong side of the mirror. SI is going to be negative if you have a virtual image. Again, it's kind of like it's on the wrong side of the mirror. And so in those two situations, we need to remember to make the um, number negative when we use it in the equation. Another equation that's going to be important to us is the magnification equation. Magnification simply refers to the ratio of the image height to the object height. We're going to call the image height h subscript i, the object height h subscript o. So the bigger the difference between those two, the bigger the magnification. So again, kind of resketch in my picture. That height is hi. That height is ho. 
and the magnification is just HI over HO. If we have a inverted image, inverted is fancy for upside down, then the image height is negative, and the magnification will be negative as well. Lastly, I can also relate the magnification to the distances. I can say that the magnification is negative SI over SO, and then because magnification equals high over ho, I can set these two things equal to each other. And that's most of the time how we're going to want to use that. So looking at your formula chart real quick, those two equations do show up there. For some reason, the magnification equation is written in absolute value terms, um, but I kind of want you guys to know when the image height should be negative and when it should be positive. It's not too hard. So let's look at a quick example. Let's suppose we've got something that's three centimeters tall and we put it two centimeters from a concave mirror whose radius is eight centimeters. And we want to figure out what the image, uh, where the image is and how tall it is. So the first thing I'd recommend we do is draw a ray diagram. So there's our picture. I know that since the uh, radius is 8 centimeters, that the focus is 4 centimeters. And so my object distance being 2 centimeters is going to be about halfway between the mirror and the focus. So I can draw one, the first ray that goes parallel and then through the focus. And then I'm going to draw the second ray that goes through the center. So away to the mirror and then reflects to the center like that. Notice that those two rays don't cross. So what we need to do is trace them back. So we might do something like that. And so there's our image where they cross at. So this image will be virtual and it would be upright. It's important to realize that so that we make sure we get the right numbers when we do the equation. So there's our equation that we're going to use. Um, I would solve it for 1 over SI. So plugging in our numbers, that would be 1 over 4 minus 1 over 2. Use good fraction technique, get a common denominator. And so 1 fourth minus 2 fourths would be negative 1 fourth. And then doing the reciprocal of that would give me negative 4 centimeters. So that tells me that the image is 4 centimeters to the right of the mirror. We get a negative image distance because it is a virtual image. If it was a real image, we would have gotten a positive image distance. Um, so to figure how tall the image is, I'm just going to use that ratio. HI over HO equals negative SI over SO. I can solve that for HI. So I know my image distance is negative 4. Be sure to plug the negative in there. And I know SO is 2. And then we're told the height of our object was 3 centimeters, which would give us an image height of 6 centimeters. So again, we got a negative image distance because our image was virtual, which is what we should expect. And then we got a positive height because our image was upright. And that's typically going to happen when we have a virtual image. And so hopefully, after we get good at this, we can explain why this Tyrannosaurus is closer than it appears in this mirror. Um, we'll work some examples together in class. We're going to draw lots and lots and lots of ray diagrams, um, some involving Tyrannosaurus, some not. Um, but we'll do that when we get to class next time. So I'll see you then. Ta-ta.